We give God a glory. Can we have Second Chronicles chapter 7? And we'll look at the, the 12 through to the 14 verses. Second Chronicles 7, 12, 13, and 14. See, Solomon had prayed, dedicated the temple, just like we are here now, right? And the Bible says this, and this is what we are looking at from Second Chronicles chapter 7. After he had prayed, God Almighty spoke back to him. There it is. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said, I've heard the prayer that you've made. Where? Where? In this place. <laughs> Can you continue that? To myself for what? Go back. Let's go back. Yeah. To myself for a house of sacrifice. Oh, Jesus. God has heard you. Amen. Put your finger on that. And then he moved on to say that. Minyan me, Jehovah God, if I shut up the heavens, that there be no rain, or I send the locusts. You know what locusts are, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you call them maybe? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. If I send the locusts to devour the land, or pestilence, Which means this is God himself orchestrating certain things, allowing certain things to happen for a reason, right? He is sovereign. Jehovah God, he is sovereign. And I stand here to announce to you that God is sovereign. And I know you know that. Now listen. If my people who are called by my name, God knows you. Do you know that? He knows you by name. Before the world knew who you were, Jehovah God knew you. He knew there are several, you know, where is Dr. Sari? Doc, can you give us a bit of, you know, biology here? You see, when a man and a woman come together for procreation, whatever comes from the man and whatever comes from the woman together to form you and me, correct? Mm -hmm. The Lord knew exactly that spermatozoa from your dad. There are several of them. That single one that was going to lock up you in your mother's egg to form you. The Lord God knew it. This is how powerful God is. And he knew that with that coming out, you'll be a woman or you'll be a man. And he will give you a certain name, which your dad gave you. So if my people who are called by my name will do what? Will humble themselves. And you see, the, the servant of God here, Pastor Gales, the Lord led him to read from James chapter 4, right? <laughs> humility is there. And humility is a fruit of the spirit. Child of God, it is very true that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and the verse 9, it said that he will maintain the feet of his saints, but the wicked he will silence in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Amen. You can't make it, and I can't make it. No human being on the face of this earth can make it without God. There are two camps. You are either on the side of God or not. No middle ground. That's why when I meet someone, I say, me, me a Christian, I'm, I'm a Christian. I say, praise God, hallelujah. 
You're born again, yes. Then I begin to watch you. I w I'm watching to see your fruit. Everyone sitting here, this man, he watches you. He knows those of you who are playing games and those of you who are serious. Otherwise, then the spirit of righteousness is not upon him. Because if you're a servant of God, God, God gives you eyes. You see, you are a watchman. You are the under-shepherd of the great shepherd himself, overseeing the sheep. So God gives you eyes to see what's going on in the congregation. That's why he gives you messages to come and preach to build a church. Otherwise, you come and stand in front of God's people and just give them an answer. I remember when we came here in 2000 from South Africa, we went to church. When you hear somebody invite us to a Methodist church, I would thought it's like the Ghana Methodist church, you know. Hey! This Osofu was standing there and then had newspaper clips. So when we went to, of course, my children know that I preached. They said, but daddy, what was going on? I said, I don't know. So why, why was the pastor reading from newspaper clips and talking about cancer, this person? I said, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but my kids were very worried. You see, by their fruits, you will know them. So, you see, the Bible says that the spirit inside of you and the spirit inside of me, if, if the spirit of Christ, when I meet you, the witness is there. You, you, don't, don't force it. The witness is there. At times, I sit on the internet in the office, and I, I start Googling names of the brothers and sisters I was with at Tech those days in the 80s. Because I keep, anytime God gives me somebody's name, I pray for that person. I start searching for him. That's why I called Rageos. I caught him online. And then I saw this very stage and this very pulpit. He was messing, this is my brother there. <laughs> How did I know Dr. Asari? I've not met him before. But I saw him, you know. I said, aha. <laughs> so I connected with Dr. Asari in spirit before I even saw him here today. So when, I, when he came here, he came to stand. I knew this is the man. This is the same head I saw. This is the same, this is the, you know. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, sister, don't worry. Look, don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and do what? And pray. Is that all? So after you pray, what next? You turn. Do what? Oh, okay. Second Chronicles, please. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Okay. So after you pray, what do you do? Seek his face. In three, people say, you can't read your name. You know what I'm saying? I learned my tree from tech. I'm from the Western region. I'm from Inzima, you know. <laughs> I, all my tree I learned from tech. Kuma say, I want to miss you tree. I didn't learn in nowhere. So we turn right then, him, waiting on God, seeking his face. And do what? Turn from their wicked ways. The Bible speaks about the heart of man being what? Ah. Our heart is wicked. That is why when Jesus comes into your life and Jesus comes into my life, he has to transform the heart first. And if Satan wants to get you, get the heart first. So, you are done. In the same way, when the Holy Ghost gets your heart, good news. Right? Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from where? Heaven. I'll tell you a short story after this. And we're going to go into business. You see, tonight is a night of action. I came here on a mission. I didn't come here just to come and do primaries or caucus or what have you. That one is done, you know. <laughs> I came here on a special mission. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that was... No, 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 no. Hey, as for that man, I'm not here to trump you. 
I'm here to Jesus you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins. You know what? Sin is always like our shadow always marking down after us. That's why it's very important as a child of God you maintain yourself on that part of forgiveness. And if you do that, as the book of Isaiah says, you hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, my son. This is the way, my daughter. Walk ye in it. Otherwise, you will slip easily. Especially in this nation, you can go without anybody noticing you. Hmm? High school boy. Your father is not there, you know. That some, you know, those kind of games. You know, married man with your ring. You go in somewhere, remove them, put in your wallet somewhere, and then playing around. Oh, God is watching you. And I want to come to church. Hallelujah, God is good. Oh, send a lie. <laughs> hey, truffle, right? <laughs> I was once driving from Iowa to Arkansas. And I drove through the whole of Missouri. It takes eight hours to drive from the north to the south of Missouri before I cross the state line. And then from the border to Jonesboro, Arkansas, where my girls are studying, it takes several hours. Then we, we were tired, so we stopped at a gas station. And I wanted to get some coffee, and it was gone. I entered the gas station, light on. But no one. Ah, what's going on? I tried to scream. No one here. No, nobody. I'm talking about Arkansas. You know. And then I looked. The, the restrooms. Men, women. But the men's side. There was a notice. Out of use. So no man can go there, right? So only the woman's side. So as I was standing there, I saw a couple emerge from the woman's bathroom. I'm sorry, but this is strange. This is weird. And one of them was the lady, the cashier. And as for the man, I don't know. But all I did was I wanted to pay my gas, get my coffee, and go away. But as we were going, I was thinking, I said, Maybe this man is an elder in some church somewhere. I said, maybe. So said, maybe this woman is some wonderful Christian sister somewhere. But what is going on in that bathroom? I'm not assuming. I'm not accusing anybody. But women's bathroom, restroom, and then and a man there, two of them coming. I was going, okay, God, you know. Whatever you do that nobody sees you, know that God has it on record. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and do what? And heal their land. Thank you, Jesus. There will be healing tonight. There will be restoration tonight. And I'm not saying this because I'm making it up. It is true. Amen. Amen. I'm so privileged that this is the first extended night of prayer. And I'm here with you. Amen. All the way from Iowa. I long for times like this. Because these times are rare. So if you see a group of people who are called by the name of God, seeking God in this hour of the night. Right now, some people are in the club. Some people are sleeping. Others are doing all sorts of things that we can't even mention here. The Bible says that it's, it is even shameful to mention the things that they do in secret. That's why the Bible says you and I we should not be partakers of the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather we should do what we should expose them. Let them call you names. It's okay. Walk on the path of righteousness if you want to see salvation, if you want to see the hand of God. My brother, my sister, keep yourself straight on that part of righteousness. 
God will bless you. But you know what? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3, correct? No, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Talking about the last days. After the last times will come. If, if you go further down in the same chapter, it says that, and everyone who desires to live a godly life in Christ shall suffer persecution. If you desire to live a godly life in Christ, you will suffer persecution, whether you like it or not. That is what Jesus told the disciples. In the world, you shall face tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. If they did it to Jesus, wouldn't they do it to you? They will. So why do you think, I mean, when something's happening to you, then something's wrong, you're crying. Eh? You remember when I take, break me, melt me, mo use me. Eh? The one God has to say, hey, 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 hey. He says, you break you. Then when he can't just break you, hey, mama. But he says, you break you. Now he's breaking you, you're crying. Nyamiba. <laughs> Child of God, if you want to see the hand and power of God, there is only one way. And that way is to keep yourself on the path of righteousness. Who has ever heard of an angel called Angel Gabriel? All of us. What message did the angel Gabriel Give to Mary in Luke chapter 1. Let me remind you about the birth of Christ. When the angel appeared unto Mary, and I want you to note something. We are coming to pray, but get this right. You are going to conceive and bear a son. And his name shall be so, so, and so. Mary said, what? I don't know no man. I'm a virgin. So how will this be? What was the response of the angel? He said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And tonight I stand here to announce to you that the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you tonight. Amen. And that which will be given birth out of your life tonight going will be holy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the Lord, as I was praying to us tonight, he opened my, my eyes to see so many things. And then early this morning, before I left home, I have got you know, a box of coins, just pennies. The Lord asked me to pick two pennies from that box, and I kept them in my pocket. And something interesting happened on the aircraft. You know, the first time I flew ever in my life was in 1980, when we, take, we went to Monrovia for pastor's conference with Maureen Kudo and those people. That was the first time I ever flew. And since then, I've been in the air quite a bit. I never saw money on the floor of any aircraft that I've flown until today. When I was flying from Charlotte, North Carolina, to Raleigh, North Carolina, where I sat, my eyes saw something. And the same penny that the Lord said I should pick, I picked it. So you see, I have four pennies here. This one, this dirty penny, from my money box. And then another penny, which is beautiful, also from my money box. And then the one that the Lord gave me on the floor of the aircraft, shiny one. This one, I also picked it in front. <laughs> Today is like, I mean, days of pennies. When I bought gas, before I went to the airport from home, I picked this one from when I stepped out of the door, it was right that I picked it. God has a message for you and me tonight. Amen. And this is what I want you to catch. You see, this penny, they are just symbols. Have you seen this penny? Is it dirty? Very dirty, correct? Yeah. 
this is what it's supposed to be. This one has been adulterated. And the Lord, as I prayed to come here tonight, the Lord showed me that several of you here, instead of this is how you're supposed to be, but the enemy has made you this. So tonight, God is going to make you this. When I saw this in front of me in the aircraft, I said, Dear Lord, but I said, Yeah, this is what I'm, I'm sending to, to rally to go and say. You see, Satan has sought to define some of you, he has sought to give you a different identity. Right? It's like in Ghana, you, you hear somebody's name, Abel Brense. Ubi di Abel Brense, Names. Names have impact, right? Do you remember this man in, 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 in the book of 1 Samuel 25, Nabal? Abigail's wife? Aha! Uh -huh. As his name is, so is he. So he's a fool. Eh? Yeah, eh, look, there are certain names if your parents give you, they have disturbed you. Oh, how cry. But, do you know something? God is good. And tonight, God is going to change identities in this congregation. Amen. And it is not just for yourself, yes, partially, but on a broader scale, for the sake of the kingdom of God. So that God can use you to touch lives. You see, Jesus gave two parables, and we're going to pray. One in Luke chapter 11, and the other one in Luke chapter 14. Both parables are about persistence in prayer. In fact, in Luke 11, it speaks about importunity. Right? It speaks about importunity. This gentleman had a friend who came on a journey in the night. He was like, hey, I had you. You're chirikomoha, and I was so good. I was mini brodo. Then goes to I go to Dr. Sarah's place. Go, 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 go. Knock it, knock it, knock it. Why in here? Oh, Brother David. Oh, Brother David, Madame of Radada. They are all asleep, you know? Jesus said, although your friend may want to say something like that, but because of your persistence, constantly knocking, importunity, he will get up and give you as many loaves as you want. Then he said, ask, shall be given. Seek, knock. And that everyone who asks, that's what? Receives. Anyone who seeks, that's what? Find. Anyone who knocks, that's what? It's all pain. Child of God, have you asked enough? That's my question. Have you sought God's face enough? It but who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face. Have you sought God's face enough? Beginning tonight, something is going to change in your life. And then in Luke chapter 14, when the disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, he, he gave them the pattern in the Lord's Prayer. And then he made a statement by saying that men ought to pray and never give up. Pray always. First Thessalonians 5, right? Pray without ceasing. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Namiba, child of God, pray without ceasing, day and night. 
And you see, I don't talk about something I don't do. If you go behind me right now and you ask my wife or my children, they will tell you. Does daddy pray? I pray and I don't pray because I want to show to be religious. I'm serious. I'm doing battle. You see, if you're a soldier at war, you know, you don't play with the enemy. To be very honest with you, I'm not saying, I say this to the glory of God. Most of the time, the whole year, I eat once a day. I'm always doing battles and I see results. Not in my life, but in the life of other people. And they testify. I was in Zambia for six years, teaching high school level physics. But the environment that I was, it was demonic. And when Bonnie, look, if you're talking about witches and wizards, that place called Senanga, oh, Mako Tori Bakayande. You've seen nothing. See, when I was in Ghana, some of my police friends, one of them is from a place called Bakbo in the, in the Bota region. He said, you, you this guy, you know, he said, creepy, creepy. Let's go to Bakbo. I'll go and cook you small. <laughs> Yeah, he said, you know, come with me. I will take you to Bakpo. You know, I'll just go and cook you small. I said, cook me small? <laughs> Jehovah God is there. The blood has done it already. I said, are you these Christians? Uh, no, small. Not big, small. That place, if you think there's Bakpo in Ghana, and you don't know Seranga, you don't know nothing. Demons. And when I set my foot in that town, the Lord opened my eyes to see what was happening in the spiritual realm. So, prayer and the word. So, they turned their eyes on me. They fought me tooth and nail. One night, I was sleeping, and one of the teachers on campus, a known wizard, came. Face to face to attack me in the dream, you know. But like, I fought him, I fought him, and eventually he turned into a cat. Cat, black cat. And I struck the black cat dead. And then I left my, 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 my home where I was living on campus and ran to the kitchen of the high school. It was a boarding school. It was closed. And I went for a wheelbarrow in the dream. I came with a shovel and fetched the cat in the wheelbarrow and went and buried the cat by the kitchen in a field near the kitchen in the dream. Listen to this story carefully. The Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and powers. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And whom burning. They are very, very wicked. They don't joke. They don't mess up with people. They come to hit you, to destroy you. Hmm. I woke up from this dream. And my whole body was sore. I see physically I was fighting. No kidding. No energy. Oh, God. I prayed and slept. As I was going to work the next day, the window, the glass pane in the bedroom where I, I was, there was a crackling. That was not there the day prior. But there was so much tension in the spirit realm in the bedroom that something happened. Now, listen to this part. I went to class the whole day. You know, my whole body was thrown out of gear. I came home in the afternoon, and then my wife was cooking. Behind, I had a mango tree and then a stand tap that people could, you know, passersby could come and get water, you know, right by the mango tree. So while I was there, something just led me to step outside. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I saw? Black cat, big cat, dead under the mango tree. 
I had even forgotten about the dream. And then I told my wife that, Shalom, have you seen this cat? She said, no. Have you been outside here? I said, no, I've not been there. I said, okay, no problem. So I went to the kitchen, took a wheelbarrow and a shovel, and still the dream hadn't clicked. Now when I came back and I shoveled the cat and dumped the cat in the wheelbarrow, then the Lord started playing back the dream. I said, hallelujah. So I was holding the wheelbarrow, going, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, God is good. And then I went and dug a hole and buried the cat. The same man who came to me in the dream had a problem, and they called me to go and pray for him. I went to one brother. He did master care called Isaac Quason. I said, brother Quason, let's go. He was like, me and Quason was like Paul and Timothy, you know. He was still young in the faith, so I was like kind of grooming him. He was a bit afraid of spiritual offense. I said, let's go. So we went to this guy's house, and I said, sir, we received your message, so we came to see what's going on. So I know, ah, Bodevi, uh, means I'm sick, you know, they are speaking lousy. So I wanted to pray for me. I said, oh, is that right? What's the prayer? I, said, I don't know. I said, okay, look, we're going to pray. So I told Braquation, don't say anything. Let's just raise our hands and begin to worship God. So we went into worship. We worship, 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 and then we just went into tongues as the Holy Ghost gave us utterance. We prayed in tongues, prayed in tongues, prayed in tongues. The guy was shaking, but nothing was happening. I said, Jehovah God, what is it? And then God said, just look under the collar of his shirt. Listen to this. Holy Ghost speaks. Kandorobo say. So I went there and looked right under the collar of his shirt. Do you know what I saw? A thin green thread. Like you used to sew. Thin green thread with a locker, which was a bone. The bone of maybe some animal or something. And then Holy Ghost said, tear that thread. When I tore it, instantly, flame, he started vomiting. He vomited a lot of flame, green, yellow, some naughty things on the floor, splashing it out. No running and crying. We never stop. We continue to blast in the Holy Ghost. And when we were done, he sat up and said, what is happening here? We said, we don't know. <laughs> but we know that the presence of God is here. And this is evidence. He started crying. The next day, it was in the night, the next day, the news was all over the school. Everybody would see, ah, what was going on? They there was some powers. I said, no power. God was there. The man was delivered. But this is the same man who came to attack and Jehovah God crushed him. But you see, God showed him kindness. Eventually, I left Zambia, went to South Africa, Namibia, and all over, and I've not gone back to Zambia since. I hope they are alive. But what I'm saying is that demons are wicked. They don't joke. Don't joke with them. The Bible says if you keep fire in your bosom, it will burn you. Don't mess with Satan. Don't do it. Everything that comes into your mind, if it is contrary to scripture, don't do it if you're a child of God. Don't. If you feel like Satan wants you to lie about something, don't do it. Say the truth. Yes, I did it. No, I didn't do it. And stand by it. You understand what I'm saying? When you begin to move left and right, wishy-washy, like the book of Revelation says, you are neither hot nor cold. God will screw you out of his mind. And do you know why it is dangerous to fall into the hands of the living God? Because God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. And tonight, myself, Pastor Gaius, Dr. Sari, would you please come forward? And pastor, if you have any elder here that you want to come and join us, you know your man. 
right? Get them here. And we are going to pray for each one of you, without exception. Each one of you, we are going to pray for you, for God's deliverance. Because some of you, this is what has happened. What is in your hand? Satan has taken it. So you're always going through financial crisis, true or false. Anytime money comes, something has to happen for that money to go. <laughs> when I was at the airport in Charlotte, my wife called me and said, you know, after we had dropped you at the airport, we went back. Well, I left home early. So they went back and said, when I was sleeping, I had a dream. I said, what is it? It's like I saw your dad. And my dad is late. He passed away in 2000. You know, and one, actually. 2001, August. I saw your dad, and there was a young boy. But that young boy was not you. But I saw your dad. Your dad looked young, you know, and was saying that this boy, he's got gold in his hand, and I've removed it from him. I've taken it away from him. And he will struggle. I just laughed. Because I knew that that was what God has told me about what Satan has done to some of you here. Scan tone, some money does, when it comes, it has to go. You can't even pay your tithe because you don't even have enough to live on. Right? Tonight is going to change. When a thief is caught, he will restore, he will come back how many times? Seven times. And whatever Satan has swallowed, tonight we're going to go in there. Uh, there's a doctor. We're going to operate. Surgical operation. We're going to open the belly of Satan and remove every, everything that he has swallowed. We're going there. Amen. At least with the doctor, I said, so he can tell us, you know, if, if we're going wrong in the surgery, we say, no, you don't cut here. That's why I'm calling him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, some of you, You've been, you've been mislabeled. You've been called names. And you're not supposed to be called those names. So when people see you, they see you as such. Let me tell you one thing. Every human being has two personalities. One of them is the outward personality. Oh, she is pretty. You know, he's handsome. You know, he's ugly, blah, blah. You know, that kind of nonsense. That is immaterial. What I'm seeing you, me, this is just a chunk of biological hardware. Nothing else. Yeah. If you cut me, it's just blood. If you go deeper, you get my bones. Period. But there's something inside of you. Do you know, Bible says when God created man, God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. Right? That God spirit in you, because your body, soul, spirit, trichotomy as a human being, the spirit inside of you, right? It's what makes you who you are. That personality, you see, that inside of you, what controls the things you do that people see, that is your true personality. There's something inside of you that I don't see. There's something inside of me that you don't see. But though that which is inside of me controls them, my behavior, and you see those behavior. Right? That is your true personality. And then the consistency in those behaviors becomes your character. I wait here, oh, oh, did draw. He's a liar. Anytime he, open, he opens his mouth, he's lying. There's a young boy who used to be in the church I, I minister in, uh, in, in, in Ames, Iowa. The only time that boy is not lying is when he's quiet. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm not kidding. The only time the boy is not lying is when he's not speaking. <laughs> when he opens his mouth, lie after lie after lie. And he wants you to believe that what he's telling is true. I tell you, you sit and describe his mother's kitchen. That even the kitchen in the White House doesn't come close. <laughs> Meanwhile, this boy is from a broken home. Drug ridden, family broken, and he himself is messed up. But he'll make you believe that, oh, God is good, hallelujah. I said, man, don't come and fool nobody. Go to the Bible and learn and depart from evil. You can't fool nobody. 
He was in the church, but going out with an underage girl at the high school. We knew all these things. You know, but he will fool you. You can't fool nobody. Tonight, God is going to do something. Some of you, you are going through pain. Maybe with your children or in your family life. Tonight, it's going to be different. If my people who are called by my name. Osofu, when are you closing? Two. Okay, then we are done to pray. Because we, we want to trust God so that tonight will be very memorable. And he has a reason why tonight is tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Kanderebo. Yes, sir. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And as I sat here and was singing that song, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I said, Hallelujah. And tonight, it is not by might nor by power. It is not me. It's not Pastor Gaius. It's not Dr. Sari. It's not the elder. It is Jehovah God who is going to deliver you. And you'll give him glory. So, Mami Gaius, should I ask you a question? No, no, no. It's a simple one. Should I? Please say yes. (laughs) <laughs> okay. So, do I have your permission to ask you have the question? Thank you very much. You see, when, when you set a table for your husband and your children, the plates and, you know, the forks and knives that you, you pull from the kitchen drawer, the cabinet, those forks and the knives and the spoons there, you have several of them. Do they tell you when and how and where to use them? (laughs) Who determines the time and the purpose? You do. In the same way, you and I, or Sofo Gaius, Dr. Asari, myself, we are just like those fork and knife in the kitchen cabinet. We don't choose when God should use us. We don't choose how. And where he determines the times and seasons. So I didn't come here today because I want to come and bluff. God sent me for this reason that he is going to deliver. And I've delivered that message. Yes. 